Sure. China's ruling Communist Party has set in motion a controversial national security law for Hong Kong following pro-democracy protests last year. Now, this is a move that is seen as a major blow to the city's freedoms. But Hong Kong's leader, Carrie Lam, says she supports the decision, claiming it won't affect people's rights. So what do we know about this proposed law? Well, the plan has been submitted at the annual National People's Congress. They largely rubber stamp decisions that have already been taken by the Communist leadership. The proposed new law will ban sedition, secession and treason, which means any protest could be punished more severely than in the past. Article 4 says Beijing can embed national intelligence agencies in the Hong Kong government to oversee its enforcement. And Beijing would be able to place the measure into basic law. Now, that's the mini constitution on how Hong Kong is run, effectively bypassing the territory's own lawmakers. Here's Steve McDonnell. After more than two months' delay because of the coronavirus, China's most important annual political gathering is underway, and the symbolism is enormous. But thousands of delegates could gather under the same roof, including the country's senior political and military leadership, conveys an image of an emergency under control. People from every walk of life have given their all. We've waged a total war against the virus. Our medical workers have fought with courage. Our servicemen and women have shouldered heavy responsibilities. However, the Communist Party elite also heard that the crisis isn't yet over. And crucially, China's number two leader said there'd be no economic growth target for this year due to ongoing global uncertainty. But another issue overshadowed all of this, with the introduction of national security legislation for Hong Kong. It doesn't sound like much, but it's a bombshell targeting dissidents in the city. We must take powerful measures to lawfully prevent, stop and punish them. Following last year's summer of rebellion in Hong Kong, more than 7,000 protesters have been charged with public assembly and rioting crimes. Under these new provisions, they could face much more serious laws relating to subversion, succession and treason. This is the end of Hong Kong. This is the end of one country, two system. Make no mistake about it. The US was hinting that the city's special trading status might be withdrawn even before the details were revealed. I don't know uh, what it is because nobody knows yet. Uh, if it happens, we'll address that issue very strongly. With this country every day edging closer and closer towards something like normality, the authorities here do have a good coronavirus story to tell. But with the world's attention still focused on fighting this disease, China's leaders have been accused of using this crisis as something of a smokescreen to try and introduce draconian laws at a time when this will attract much less attention than it otherwise would. Stephen McDonald, BBC News, Beijing. Well, let's just show you some pictures we've just got in from Hong Kong a short time ago. These are pro-democracy reformists in Hong Kong's assembly, mounting pretty small-scale demonstration there, but they are waving placards silently and trying to disrupt proceedings. And you can see them there uh, being escorted out, not so quiet there at that moment. Well, Claudia Yip is a spokesperson for the Hong Kong Human Rights Monitor, a local human rights NGO monitoring the implementation of international human rights standards. And she joins me now from Hong Kong. Claudia, uh, those people just now, those uh, pro-democracy uh, legislators are saying this is an end to Hong Kong. This is an end to autonomy and freedom. Do you agree with them? I'm afraid it's have been happening for quite a while. And this act by the Chinese government, I would say, is really uh, making the situation much more precarious. As we know, um, um, Hong Kong, we used to enjoy the autonomy. It's promised in the Sino-British Joint Declaration and in the basic law. We have an autonomy in making laws, in law enforcement, etc. But the act by the uh, National People's Congress to make laws for Hong Kong and also to impose um, national security institutions in Hong Kong to carry out those laws, it's, it's 
is disregard com, is a complete disregard of the one country two systems. Claudia, can it be stopped in any way? Will Hong Kong officials have a say, or because Carrie Lam says she supports it, does that mean it's a done deal? I, I really doubt anyone in um, um, in the pro-establishment camp or in the government in the Hong Kong government will have the um, guts to stand up against the decision because um, they have been briefed not to make any noise about it, just to say, yes, we support it. And that's what we have been uh, hearing from the government, from Carrie Lam, and also from lawmakers um, 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 who have been uh, supportive of the government. We watched day after day as young people came out onto the streets of Hong Kong, Claudia, pro-democracy protesters, uh, so committed and so passionate to their cause. How are they feeling today? Uh, um, um, to be honest, um, we have been living in this uh, threat of China eroding Hong Kong's autonomy for quite a while now, at least uh, since last year when they tried to pass the extradition bill. So for some people, they have already um, prepared for this moment for a long time. But still, a lot of people are very angry about it. And um, the fear and the disapproval of this act have been quantified by the plunge of the Hang Seng Index and the um, currency of Hong Kong. It has uh, depreciated since last night when the announcement was made. Claudia, thanks for your thoughts. Thanks for joining us from Hong Kong. Claudia, you there.